inquiry into the termination of the former Managing Director of TAFE New South Wales and welcome our two uh, witnesses, Ms Tickle and uh, Ms Harrison, to the inquiry and uh, it's our first hearing into this particular matter and before I commence it's the custom of the Parliament to acknowledge the traditional inhabitants of this land, the Gadigal people of Aurora Nation and I do that with all due respect as well as acknowledging all the other important contributors to the history of this site and the construction industry and the parliamentary staff who have supported MPs and made our work possible. We acknowledge and thank them all. And uh, today we have a hearing with representatives from the Department of Education and TAFE New South Wales and I thank them for giving up their time to give evidence to this uh, inquiry. And. Um, we have the regular outline of uh, proceedings about the broadcast being on the Parliament's website, our instructions to media representatives, uh, uh, procedural fairness, adverse reactions, and if you can't answer anything immediately, you're free to take the question on notice. And if everyone can turn off their mobile phones uh, for the duration of the hearing. I now welcome our witnesses and uh, because this is a separate inquiry to budget estimates, uh, you both need to be sworn in afresh and if uh, Ms Harrison could start that process in the usual way. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Georgina Jane Harrison. I'm the Secretary of the Department of New South Wales Department of Education. I solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that the evidence now about to be given by me shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you, Chair. My name is Julie Tickle, Chief People and Culture Officer for TAFE New South Wales. I solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that the evidence now about to be given by me <coughs> shall be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. And would either of the witnesses like to start by making a short statement that's available to you? Uh, yes, Chair, but I will keep it brief. Um, uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to make an opening statement. Uh, I understand from my invitation to attend this hearing together with, 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 ooh, with Ms Julie Tickle, Chief People and Culture Officer of TAFE New South Wales, that the committee has further questions concerning the termination of the Managing Director of TAFE New South Wales. I also understand the committee has also invited the former Managing Director of TAFE New South Wales, Mr Stephen Forby, uh, to appear before the committee. In my capacity as Secretary of the Department for Education, I would like to provide some further information to assist the committee. I can confirm that the com for the committee that Part 5, Section 13 of the Technical and Further Education Commission Act 1990 provides for the establishment of the Managing Director of the TAFE Commission. It is a statutory office and is appointed by the Governor. Provisions regarding the employment of the Managing Director are set out in Schedule 1A of the Act. This includes that the employment of the Managing Director is governed by a contract of employment between the Managing Director and the Minister. Schedule 1A pro further provides that a range of provisions under the Government Sector Employment Act 2013 will relate to the employment of public service senior executives and apply to the Managing Director, noting that the GSC Act references to the employer are read to read as a reference to the Minister. I can confirm that the termination of Mr Forby was conducted in line with these pieces of legislation. Mr Forby was provided with written advice from Minister Lee advising of the Minister's decision in relation to the termination of his employment in accordance with Schedule 1A, Section 3 of the TAFE Commission Act 1990 and Mr Forby's contract of employment. That written advice in the form of the Minister's signed letter was given to Mr Forby by me during the course of a meeting with him at 4.15pm on the 2nd of December 2021. In accordance with Schedule 1A, Section 3 of the TAFE Commission Act 1990 and Clause 11.2 of Mr Forby's contract of employment, Mr Forby was entitled to 38 weeks compensation payment on termination of his employment, together with other accrued statutory entitlements. I understand from the previous questions at Budget Estimates the Committee has requested a copy of Minister Lee's letter to Mr Forby from both the Department of Education and from TAFE. Neither the Department nor TAFE have been able to provide the Committee with the letter as requested. I can confirm that this is on advice from both the Department's General Counsel and TAFE Legal uh, that the letter contains personal information relating to Mr Forby as it relates to his employment arrangements. As such, it contains matters of privilege and it is considered inappropriate for the Department or TAFE to release the letter through a general request from the Committee. 
In closing, I would like to emphasise that the advice given at the initial hearing, uh, I would like to emphasise the advice given at the initial hearing that the role played by me was to facilitate the Minister's position in operationalising and facilitating his employment decision. Ms Tickle, as the Chief People and Culture Officer of TAFE, was required to action the termination once she had been informed of the decision on the 3rd of December. This is consistent with long-standing conventions around the role of secretaries in supporting ministers in their employment relationship with statutory officers and the role of HR functions in our organisations. Together with the Department, I have sought to professionally support that convention and the specific employment framework that applies to the Managing Director of TAFE New South Wales. I trust this assists the Committee further in its understanding of the issue insofar as my role and that of the Department is concerned. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Tickle. Do you have an opening statement or it's covered by the Secretary? Yes, it's covered by the Secretary. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Uh, well, I'll open the uh, hearing to questions. Mr. Thank Deanna. you, Chair, and thank you to the witnesses for your appearance today. Uh, I'll refer uh, Ms Tickle to uh, question 17 uh, in relation to questions taken on notice uh, at our hearing earlier in March. Uh, Ms Tickle, you were asked if you could also review the files in relation to the termination of Mr Falby and see if you can provide material that you have about the termination. And then Mr Shubridge went on and asked, and you said yes, certainly. Uh, Mr Shubridge went on and asked, including any communication, if there is, either with the Governor or with the Executive Council about the termination of Mr Falby, uh, you have to give a verbal response. Uh, and she's, Ms Tickle said, yes, yeah, I'm sorry, yes. And then in terms of the answer, the answer says refer to response, budget estimates, transcript, question 16. So I'll start by asking Ms Tickle, did you review the file? Uh, yes, I did. The, um, the letter is the, is the file. There's no other items on the file? No. Nothing else? The only other item is the payroll information that I provided to the estimates hearing. So there's no uh, uh, supporting brief in terms of the preparation of the letter? No, there is not. Is that uh, customary for there to be no other attendant documentation in relation to the preparation? Presumably there was some instruction to you from someone to prepare a letter in certain terms. Why is that not on the file? Uh, I did not prepare the letter and I wasn't instructed to prepare the letter. I received a copy of the letter on the 3rd of December after um, the meeting that Miss, um, Miss Harrison has just described. I had no, no, um, no involvement with preparing the letter. You have a file management system in the department, in TAFE, yes? Yes. Which one? Um, trim. Trim. So uh, there'll be a trim record of uh, whoever's had access to the file. Are you the only person who's had access to the file? Uh, I would have to take on notice who has had access to the file, but I certainly did receive a copy of the letter. It was sent to me by the Department of Education. And uh, so is there... Um, so uh, in terms of the, uh, the file contents, uh, are you aware of who was asked uh, to do the actual preparation? No, I'm not. <coughs> uh, so is there any indication... Are you aware in any way of how the letter came to be created? No, I'm not aware. Not I received a copy of the letter. I don't have any information about how it was prepared or who prepared it. And is it unusual for that not to be on the file? Uh, it's, it's unusual. It would be unusual if it was um, a termination where TAFE had prepared the letter. However, as we did not, I wouldn't describe that as unusual, no. Right, I see. So, Ms Harrison... Uh, education prepared the letter. And we did prepare it the letter. We prepared, we prepared a draft letter for the Minister's consideration following his instructions that he wished to terminate the contract of the Managing Director of TAFE. So is there a separate file in education with the letter and the drafting instructions and the various communication that would have been required in order to bring that letter yes. into being? Yes, there is. Uh, the documentation <coughs> we'd expect to see is available in that context. Uh, and is that uh, is the contents of that file open to be produced to the committee? Uh, so uh, I am very happy to take on notice and take advice on that if we're able to provide it. But there is, uh, and certainly happy to, I just need to check with my general counsel what the um, conditions are around that. Uh, but I have, I can assure the committee there is a brief. A draft letter was prepared for the minister. Uh, the, it was provided to the minister's <coughs> office. Um, I think at the last hearing, uh, when you asked me questions on this matter, Mr De Adam, um, I did not see a copy of the final letter once uh, it was handed to me in a sealed envelope and I handed 
handed that sealed envelope to Mr Forby. Uh, so I'm una I was unaware at the time whether any changes had been made. Um, what I can confirm, uh, having gone back and reviewed the files on your questions, is that um, uh, the majority of the letter stayed the same uh, following that draft. And so, so you've yes, seen the contents of the file, Ms Harrison? I have seen uh, the contents of the file, yes. And are you able to identify what other documents sit on the file? Uh, there is a brief uh, to the Minister um, outlining the uh, termination process and with the draft letter attached and there is email correspondence between my office and our HR department uh, requesting that to be provided. Ms Tickle, can I ask you, uh, uh, did you review this answer before it was submitted? Uh, which answer? The answer to on question 17. Uh, yes, the answer to the question on notice? Yes. Yes. And, uh, and so you signed off on that, that response? Uh, yes, I believe so, yes. Is that based on advice from the General Counsel in TAFE? Or what, perhaps I should say, what advice did you receive prior to signing off? I'm just going to question 17. Yeah. So in terms of providing the letter, which um, I was asked to provide at the hearing, um, I did receive, we did receive advice from the General Counsel of TAFE New South Wales who provided the same advice as the General Counsel at the department, which was that we were unable to provide the letter to the committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms Harrison... Can you, uh, can you identify the head of privilege that you're relying on in terms of not providing a copy of the letter? Uh, so I don't have it. Uh, I don't have that to hand, Mr Deadam. I can only refer to <coughs> advice that I have received from my general counsel. Um, I think... Is that written advice, Ms Harrison? Uh, I will, I'll go back and check on that. It was action for me by my office. What I can say, Mr Deadam, in relation to that letter is obviously I know that you are in contact, the committee is in contact with Mr Forby um, and it would be... Uh, uh, I understand he is cooperating with the committee and given the letter refers uh, and the concerns are around his privacy, it would be a, a question for him to answer whether he wished the letter to be provided or if we were in a position to provide the letter in such a way that the contents did not breach Mr Forby's privacy, we would we be able to provide it in that manner? On oh, notice, are you able to provide the, the advice that was provided to, to you in relation to this answer? Uh, I am happy... Uh, in so much as it doesn't breach privilege, then yes, I am happy to take on notice and provide back to you what I can. OK. Uh, so, Miss Harrison, are you able to identify the nature of the information which you claim, which the department claims, are personal information of Mr Falby? Uh, so, uh, issues that relate uh, to him personally would include things... Uh, such as the reasons for the termination uh, being actioned, for example, would be personal information relating to Mr Forby. The reasons for his termination is personal information. Uh, and so as it relates to him and his professional uh, standing, yes, I believe they do. And if I may, what I might be able to do to help you, uh, Mr D. Adam, is as I indicated, we provided a draft letter uh, to uh, the Minister. Um, it was prepared by the department's HR operations area in line uh, with a request from the minister. Uh, the draft letter was adapted from a standard termination letter template based on section 41 of the GSE Act and it was modified to suit the employment framework for the managing director of TAFE. Uh, a range of standard operational procedures were initiated by the department to support Minister Lee and Mr Forby consistent with the termination of executives in the public service. Uh, this included facilitating the provision of the termination letter, arranging personal support for Mr Forby will be notifying appropriate stakeholders of the situation, including the Public Service Commissioner, and arranging for the appropriate internal organisational communications uh, to be uh, uh initiated. Um, the letter references the termination being responsive to changing organisational needs and the future direction and leadership required for TAFE New South Wales. Um, and the, that was the uh, notification provided in the draft to Minister Lee's office. Can I just ask, uh, Ms Harrison, uh, when did Minister Lee request the draft letter? Mm. Uh, I had a meeting uh, with Minister Lee on the 17th of November when he finalised his decision uh, requesting for uh, the termination to be actioned. And was there any discussion you had with Minister <laughs> Lee prior to the 17th of November about uh, general dissatisfaction with Mr 
for me and reasons that then might explain uh, the termination? Uh, I have uh, regular conversations with ministers uh, in the cluster. Um, they will, from time to time, touch on issues relating to the nature of the relationship between a minister and a senior official. The committee will appreciate that having a uh, high trust relationship with clear alignment on the strategic direction of government in those officials is an important part uh, of a constructive relationship between a minister and their officials. Um, and certainly I discuss those those types of issues with ministers uh, right, when and, they occur. And, and generally, when did that discussion about Stephen Forby start up? Uh, the first conversation I recall with Minister Lee in relation to Mr Forby was in August, uh, in relation to some... Uh, uh, in relation to the kind of relationship between the two and how that was working, and I provided feedback to Mr Forby uh, on, that, on that matter at the time. Right, and was there any formal process at this point, a, a, a warning, a, um, a performance plan that was put in place for Mr Forby, or it was more in after August 2021, you just had some general discussions that then culminated in this uh, decision in December? Uh, so I think a couple of things to clarify there, Chair. Firstly, uh, the, it's important to remember in this instance that the Minister is the, uh, the employer. Uh -huh. um, and so uh, I am aware that Mr Forby and Minister Lee had a conversation after that feedback in August. Um, in my ongoing uh, engagement with Mr Forby, I continued to... Uh, inquire into how the relationship was progressing and whether, from Mr Forby's perspective, he was seeing improvement. Right, but there was no formal um, process of a, a warning letter or, you know, I've got to put this in writing to you, Mr uh, Forby, that uh, these are the problems that we've got to fix? Uh, not from the department, but I couldn't account for what Minister Lee may or may not have uh, provided to Mr Forby in their regular conversations uh, and correspondence. Mm -hmm. Was the Public Service Commission consulted? Uh, yes, I spoke to the Public Service Commissioner um, uh, a number of times through the period. And what did they say? Uh, they talked about getting the necessary support in place to support... Uh, so once the termination, had, the decision to terminate had been made, uh, the focus of the conversations with Commissioner Lowe was on the support that we would provide uh, to Mr Forby on his exit to make sure these are obviously not... Uh, the best days in someone's career and then not conversations that anyone relishes having, Mr D. Adam. And so uh, I wanted to make sure that there was someone outside of the situation that would re le lean in and support Mr Forby uh, following the termination being uh, actioned. And do you know whether that occurred? Um, I couldn't confirm. I am aware that uh, Katrina, sorry, Ms Lowe, uh, Commissioner Lowe, did reach out to uh, Mr Forby. I can't confirm um, the nature of that engagement or how many times they might have spoken, for example. Coming back to the answer, I just want to uh, clarify. So you reviewed the answer prior to publication, I'm assuming? Uh, not of the TAFE questions, no, but of the department ones, yes. So the question that was directed to the department about the provision of this information, the one that was, you were responsive to, you reviewed that and signed off on it? Uh, my head of government, my executive director for government business would have uh, reviewed that and signed off on that. Right. And you are aware of the process uh, available for pro information to be provided on a confidential basis to the committee, aren't you? I am, Mr Adam, but my understanding of that process, and I believe it came up in uh, other matters discussed this morning, that um, that process would normally, from a department's perspective, be initiated following our inability to return the document, and so now would be <coughs> a good time for us to start having uh, that conversation in the way that we may provide the letter in such a manner. I see. So you and no one from the department has reached out to the committee secretary to see if there was other means to meet the obligations in relation to being responsive to the question? Uh, and so I do believe we were responsive to the question in the nature of the question that was posed, which was in a public forum for a public response. Um, and if the committee would like to seek, and we, well, certainly I can confirm that we haven't had any, um, any contact from the committee seeking to have the letter provided to them in another manner either, Mr Deadam, but I'm very happy uh, for us to look at the way that we may do that. Um, Ms Harrison, thanks very much for your time and for your... Um for your testimony, it's been quite informative. I just wanted to recap on a couple of things. So it was in August that the Minister first raised concerns with you about Mr Falby, uh, Mr Forby? That is, the, to the best of my recollection, the first time I recall an issue being raised, yes. OK. And then he finalised his decision on the 17th of November? Uh, that is when uh, I 
certainly went back to the organisation and requested that we uh, provided information on that, how we for advice to Mr Minister Lee on how he would terminate the contract and provided him with the draft materials. Okay, and are you aware of any correspondence or any meetings? Like you said, you were, you're aware of a conversation that happened with Mr Forby and Mr Lee, and sorry, and Minister Lee, subsequent to your conversation in August. Are you aware of any conversations that happened after that? after that meeting on the 17th of November. And so obviously the managing director of TAFE will meet with uh, the minister uh, on a number of, in a number of different ways through regular, regular meetings and regular one-on-one -on -one conversations. I don't have access to Mr Forby or Minister Lee's diary to confirm uh, which convers what conversations might have happened when. But you said that you were aware that after these concerns had been raised in August that there had been a conversation. Are you aware if there was another conversation after November? I am not aware of any... Uh, sorry, after August, I think... You no, 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 no. You told me that that after after your August conversation yes. with the Minister, there was a subsequent conversation That's between correct. Mr Forby and, and Minister Lee. Yes. Are you aware if there was a subsequent conversation after his decision on the 17th of November? Uh, I am not aware of conversations that may have happened between the Minister and Mr Forby at that time, no. OK. So are you aware that you presented Mr Forby the letter at 4.15 on the 2nd of December? Are you aware if that was the first time that Mr Forby was being told? Uh, that is uh, standard with convention around the termination of public service employees. Um, yes, I think that would have been the first time he would have uh, uh, been notified of that decision. Okay, thank you. Um, you said that after the 17th of November you uh, returned to your office and then <coughs> requested a brief to the Minister. <coughs> was that the first time that you then actioned was that the first time that your office provided advice to the Minister's office about what the process would be? Um, I would have in broad terms given uh, Minister Lee a verbal view of what the process would look like during that meeting um, uh, on the 17th of November and then confirmed it in the written briefing. OK, and so do, are you able to tell us when that briefing was provided to the Minister? Um, I don't have the date on hand, but I'm able to provide that on notice. OK, excellent. And... Um, and Apart, so prior to August, were any performance issues raised by Minister Lee about Mr Forby with you? Uh, and so, Ms Huzos, I'm just thinking back to the time before August. Um, uh, you'll be aware I was confirmed in the role uh, around six weeks before then, after which we had a cyber incident and a major disruption to schooling through COVID-19. Um, I am not aware that Minister, uh, Mr Forby's uh, performance with the central to mine and Minister Lee's conversations at that time, as we were focused on the delivery of TAFE through that uh, Delta wave, uh, largely in our conversations, and the delivery of ongoing skills development for the community. I understand. So, but it was pretty soon after you took on the role that he started raising concerns. Yes, I, I guess I give that time frame uh, to indicate that I also couldn't, I couldn't indicate, I wouldn't have a view of whether any discussions happened prior to me joining the role. Okay. And was it in the course of your handover from your predecessor, was it raised with you that there were some issues with the working relationship or that there had been some concerns that had been raised? Uh, not, uh, not in the context of the individual, but I think. Uh, um, no, I don't think they were actually in the context of uh, the performance of TAFE or the individual. No. Not, not explicitly raised. What I, would, um, uh, what I took as feedback at that time was that there was um, work to do across the department and TAFE to ensure that the government's agenda and its priorities were receiving the focus that the government wanted to, it to receive and that we were clear on our relative roles and responsibilities around some of those initiatives. And so uh, if I, for example, give you um, uh, areas such as the Institutes of Applied Technology, that would be an area where as a department and a TAFE as a more commercial entity for whom we have a regulatory response, uh, the feedback and handover with my uh, predecessor focused on the need for us to get clearer on that. And that would be an area where I think um, it would be reasonable for the minister to expect us to be clear on our roles and responsibilities. Thanks. Are you aware of any issues being raised with your predecessor? I, I'm not aware. I'm not, not that I'm aware of, but I couldn't speak for him. Uh, Ms Harrison, uh, it's well documented publicly that former Premier Berejiklian uh, headhunted Steph Stephen Forby and there was a special salary package involved. Um, was, um, uh, was she in contact with you or anyone to your knowledge um, to say, you know, what's, what's happening here with Stephen? Uh, uh, so you'll appreciate the decisions relating to the termination occurred after... Uh, 
former Premier Berejiklian um, had uh, left the administration, and so it was under uh, Premier Perrottet that those yeah, decisions but August, were made. August onwards, after uh, Minister Lee first mentioned... Uh, there were not conversations with me, but um, I couldn't account for whether or not Minister Lee had conversations with his Cabinet colleagues or the Premier about those issues. OK. And Premier Perrottet, was he involved at any stage? Equally, I can't... Uh, I, I had no conversations with uh, Premier Perrottet, but I cannot determine whether or not the Minister had those conversations. Right, OK. It would be normal for him to consider to do so. Right. And where are we at now with the termination letter and uh, committee access to uh, it? Is it reasonable to... Uh, redact anything that's uh, intensely private and provide it to the committee, uh, or can it be classified as a privileged document? I'm very document? happy to provide what's, it on uh, a priv as a privileged document. As a privileged document. Yes. And, and when, when can that happen, please? Uh, I can have that back to you in the next 24 hours. OK. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for the witnesses? I didn't have anything further. No, I'm, that's everything no? for me. OK. Well, thanks for your cooperation, which has been very helpful. and. Uh, we can close the hearing on that basis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.